hello. So, magic. What is it? What does it entail? Well, what it entails is people doing ignorant shit um, with your shit. Let me see what this is. It has. Ah, oh, okay, never mind. Um, <coughs> the one thing you have to remember with magic is that you can cast the hundred spells. <coughs> But only maybe three to five of them will actually do what you want them to do. And I'm speaking as someone who practices chaos magic and is a hereditary kitchen witch, right? For the most part. It's kind of a dual thing. Chaotic kitchen. The kitchen of chaos. That would be a fucking awesome band name, honestly. Kitchen of chaos. I would be listening to some shit like that. I would hope they would do like some like fusion jazz. But, um, with magic, there are several things that you need to remember. Number one, very, very few of your spells are going to come out the way that you want them to, if they are even successful in casting. And number two, um, you're gonna fuck up. You are, you are going to fuck up. You will fuck up every time. And it's not because you did something wrong, but it's because, like, it's the same as tarot cards. When you're in the middle of the reading... Those energies are pretty much set in place. It's like um, doing an inventory count of the job, like I recently did. Um, we'll still have this stuff moving, but we'll walk the counter at a certain time. That way we can count everything, start to counter back up, and then, like, it usually works that shit. But whatever you're counting at that time, that's what you have. It doesn't change anything. Shit like that. And then, like, you turn the things back on, and all the calculations come in afterwards the same thing with magic um and with tarot cards like whatever you're reading in the reading in general that's what it is locked into place as soon as it, you stop that reading time kind of starts again and it, different influences can come in different things that come into play um you know once you observe something that could be the most likely thing but that doesn't mean that like you didn't see other shit and it won't play a role in it if you will you know because fate dictates, right? And magic's kind of the same way. You can cast... And take an account of all of that shit. <clears throat> um, but at the end of the day, that doesn't mean everything's going to be successful. Like, yeah, you wanted that new job. You didn't know that the office was going to catch on fire once those ostriches were released with the, with the fucking dogs riding them. You, you didn't know that you were going to accidentally turn that bitch's hair into snakes instead of making her hair fall out. Now, you got to explain... Why she's got snakes in her fucking hair. You don't know. Because I guess she might have used the wrong... Bo like, honestly, you shouldn't be explaining shit. Don't... don't uh, Like, you should not get to the point of explaining shit. Now, I will say, as someone who is witchy... Myself, right? Um, there are many times in the IRL, or the real world, real life... Where people who are muggles know that I'm practicing and they will automatically assume that because they're going through some bad shit, it must be because I must have done something. And if any of those people ever watch me or watch this, I just want to let you know, you're not worth the, the fucking price I would have to pay to fuck your life up. And also, if I were to touch you with my magic, I'd probably be improving your life, and I don't feel like being responsible for that, which is the whole thing, right? Most people will not let you know that when you cast magic on someone, you become responsible for that person. Like, you know, like, say for example, someone, like, put a hex on my bones to make them deteriorate. I, I would be a walking, um, evidence case for what someone did to me, you know? Uh, that person's gonna have to go through a whole lot of shit for fucking that up. A person's, like, you are now responsible for this. So whatever happens with this, everything that happens with this, a consequence comes to the person you cast on it because you are responsible for me. You have to keep giving to continually deteriorate my shit. You have to keep expending energy on me. You have to keep giving me attention. You have to keep giving me validation. You have to keep getting mad and jealous because, like, 
you keep like trying to hurt my feelings and you're just making me prettier and funnier and you're just feeding into my power and I'm just going to make jokes about you at that point. It's just like, huh, huh, I guess my life's ruined now. At least I don't want to live like your fucking bitch ass. You know, like, uh, oh, poor desperate thing. They have the cast magic on me, I guess, because like, I don't know. I, 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 I could make up shit, but I don't even know what to say because this is an example, right? But that person who originally cast the magic on me, um, <clears throat> they would assume, oh, yeah, I got them, and, like, they're going to suffer. But what they don't realize is they're going to go through a whole plethora of shit. Uh, you know, deterioration of the bones, a foundational thing that is important to the body. You know, like, you really can't move without them being functional. Um, you could try to make them brittle. You can try to make them worse. You can even affect the muscles that are connected to those bones through the tissues, the tendons, the t sinew, the fission of such or whatever the fuck you know what I'm trying to say you know I'm, I'm like I'm, I'm like I'm smart I'm just dumb sometimes there's a big ass difference uh, and the person who would be responsible for such a thing happening they wouldn't be actually associating terrible things that would happen to them to what they would possibly be doing to me right so because I'm going through these slow uh, a slow degenerative process right and this is an example not that it actually is but I'm just letting you know it's a fucking example. Uh, because I'm going through the slow deterioration of the bone structure, of the marrow, of the actual foundation of this flesh, right? Their foundational shit's gonna fuck up too. Oh, well, this is the backbone of uh, your life. Let's get rid of that. Did you have this going on for you that helped you be a little bit more flexible and you can, like, do this number? Well, let's do something to you where it's a little bit more difficult and it's actually hard for you to move your hands. Oh, um... <clears throat> Like, your money was uh, what helped support you. Oh, well, the bones are what support the body. So let's, like, cut your money um, all the way the fuck down. And this will continue on and 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 it will continue it will keep going there is no stopping it it will only continue as long as there is degradation in the subject the person who casts a spell will have degradation in their life and there's no getting out of it unless they release that person right that's something that most people um who would be on the internet telling you all about magic and what they call spell work which that makes no fucking sense a spell is a work you're literally working when you're like there it's kind of it, it, it's like a weird oxymoron that I can't accept. and it's not even an oxymoron you're just saying it's like saying chai tea you're literally just saying tea tea it doesn't make any fucking sense does it no no it doesn't and most people will not tell you that there have been a plethora of people especially within Terra land and the spirits community doing their craft of witches shit right who will literally go out of their way letting people know oh i'm doing magic on this person i'm doing magic on well they won't even call it magic they say spell work which is like weird once again to me um who is actually a practitioner right it is the weirdest thing to hear muggles say that because and, and that's just to me a dead giveaway that they don't know what the fuck they're doing and they've probably done shit to people and then they wonder why their life is all fucked up right um because most practitioners know like hey i shouldn't cast something on anybody because then I have to deal with the consequences of that and whatever they go through I know I'm going to get something from it it's a balanced thing you're constantly giving your energy away to a subject who um you felt deserved such punishment such whatever I don't even know what most people would assume people would assert deserve but some people would actually throw spells at a fucking ex just cause right but um, they don't seem to realize there's an attachment with that. And I know a lot of people are going to see them like, oh, well, no, there isn't. No, there isn't. This is the dog-eat-dog -dog world. This is this is a place where you have to survive. And it's like, yeah, but like you're not supposed to like just attach your energy to anything because you're still attaching your energy. Like, you know, that's why I always suggest if you're going to get a, get, a, get a curse, make sure you do it on a windy fucking day so it's easier to carry this shit. Um, what I never told y'all is that, like, you're, it's, you, yeah, like, there, like, you need to sever that shit. Yeah, um, you're gonna throw a hex, 
throw a hex, but once you throw the hex and it activates and it does what it needs to do, you need to deactivate that shit. And most people don't fucking teach you that. Most muggles don't know that you have to deactivate a spell after it's already uh, gone out of the way. At least like two weeks after the fact. Any longer than that, it's just like, oh, well, I guess you're going to get what you get. This is what you wanted. Most people don't know that. Um, and of course, you don't have to believe me. There are other practitioners. You can listen to them. Go ahead, and listen to, go ahead and listen to anybody you want to. You ain't got to listen to a word I'm saying. I'm just telling you what the fuck I know. You don't have to believe me at all. And I don't expect anybody to. But don't be coming back here. Telling me I was right. I don't want to hear that shit. I don't give a fuck if I'm right or not. That's not, that's not for me to know. Um, you can come back here and tell me about your experiences. And I would love that. That would, that would actually be good. That would actually be worth my time. Um, but for you to come back and tell me I was right or wrong about something, that, that does nothing for me. Because, like, what, the, what, what, okay. Thank you for announcing whether or not you're going to be a flounce or not, as far as I'm concerned, but that's just me. Um, another thing to remember, um, especially when people try to get you into this so-called spiritual worship. The only way they can get you into it is if you're wild enough to believe that you need to be, right? You know, I have ran into a plethora of uh, readers within the last few years, right? Maybe even longer than that. <clears throat> Maybe even since before the pandemic started, really, really, where they are way too preoccupied with the persona they put online to realize they might be a shitty person. To realize they, nah. you know, nah. you know, it's, nah. like, you know, like, I like keeping my distance from people because I've learned, especially online, there are way more extroverts than there are introverts. Because when I was online, before all of this pandemic came down, um, an introvert can meet someone online and they would be an introvert as well and it was groovy and then the pandemic came about in quarantine and then the extroverts came online and they realized they could talk and they kept talking and they didn't stop and now there's nothing but a plethora of them and i cannot find my own for life in me because we all learn to shut the fuck up whenever the extroverts are around and so we're just going back to what the fuck we originally did which is just shutting the fuck up because you're just gonna keep talking also, I got, like, 12,000 placements, so it's just, like, like some things just don't need to be said. And I don't need to be fucking saying it. Um, but what you'll notice is, like, especially if you start getting involved in tarot and shit, too. Um, if you do, you're going to find out that you are, are a rival to everyone you fucking meet. Because they decided it. Or you will decide it. it and I, I honestly don't know. It's up to you what you want to do. Um... For me, personally, I have met many people over the years who we would have conversations, but the conversations always went into who they were, um, their abilities, what they, be like, technically what they believe in, which I, okay, um, all sorts of shit, where they came from, what they've done, their accomplishments, and I'm just sitting there like, oh, okay. And there's this kind of tra uh, uh, transference, and psychologists talk about this, where it, it was well, a slight transfer. It's not exactly the same as it, uh, but very similar. Where because this person is saying so much, and I'm just being a listener. I'm just like, oh, okay, huh? That's 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 interesting. You know, which you know, like as a Capricorn, <laughs> anytime I say that's interesting, there's a reason why I say that's interesting. You, it's up to you to figure out why I fuck I said it though. But, like, you know, I'll sit there and listen to people. <clears throat> and what happens with this sort of transference, which is almost like a form of psychosis, because I'm a person who doesn't, like, brag about what I have, my abilities, um, what I would actually literally call myself. Because I call myself a witch because it's easier to scare people. And I'm, and I'm cool with that. Right, folks? It makes life easier when people are afraid of you and stay the fuck away from you, honestly. Because then they don't bring you drama. And if they do, it's just like, oh, we must burn the witch. Okay. 
Good luck with that, because sometimes the Lord cleanses this earth with fire, and it ain't gonna be my ass that's grass and burnt and burnt in a blunt wrap. I'm just letting you fuck, you know, you know. And they will get this idea that because they are talking so much about themselves, and I am saying so little about myself, that I must be below them. But in reality, I'm more or less protecting myself. Because it's just like, I don't want anybody to really know. You know, like, like call me old, an old-fashioned old witch, um, right? But um, back in the day, secrecy was a really big fucking deal. Back in the day, uh, we just had to hide, right? Especially women. Because uh, people did so much horrible things to women. They really did. They would drown our asses. They would press us to death. And if you don't know what pressing is, that's when they would put a board over your body, put boulders one by one on top, crushing you slowly to where every time you breathe out, you can't breathe anymore in until you can't breathe in at all. It's a horrible, miserable um, way to go. It's a really torturous way to go. Like, honestly, have you, like, have y'all ever heard of, like, the brass bowl? Or I think that's what it's called. I'm not sure. It was, like, this torture device back in the day. I can't remember if it was the Greeks or the Romans or somebody else. But it was, like, they would put, like, these people who they were going to, like, basically off um, into this gigantic bowl uh, made of brass or something like that. And they would, like, put a fire underneath of it. And the screaming of the people inside of that bull actually sounded like a bull being like, Mo! Mo! And, and, you know, it would just sound like that. And that's why, I guess, why they called it the bull. Or the, either the roaring bull or the burning bull. I can't remember what the fuck it's called. Was it the raging bull? No, I don't know idea what the fuck it is. Um, but that's something right there. What the fuck was I talking about? Torture devices. Oh, pressing and shit, right? Um, but yeah, I, I like, I, I'm a very old-fashioned, like, I, I was raised by old-school people anyway, and it's just, like, it's a lot more, unless I'm in West Virginia, like, not exactly in a Bible belt, it's more like the Bible pants, or boots, well, yeah, it, it, we'd be more like boots. Yeah, we would be more like with the spurs. That's what the top of it is. You know. <laughs> like, I'd show y'all where exactly I am in West Virginia, but I'd be flipping you off at the same fucking time. That's the best part about West Virginia. We're literally a shape of a middle finger if you really thought about it. Like, let's see. Is it like this? Yeah, this would be West Virginia. I'd be, like, right up in here. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Not right here. Because this would be Harrison County, and this up here would be Monongalia. But that's literally how we tell people exactly how we live. and what That's how you show people where you are in the state of West Virginia. I was blessed to be in a state like this. Damn it. Absolutely. Like, it, it's great. We could actually show our state with our bear. <laughs> but in any regard, um, what the fuck was I talking about? But yeah, I'm, I, like, I live in an area where a mo majority of people are, like, re very religious. So it's just, like, I've always kept my shit to myself. Um, I learned many, many years ago not to share too... I'm, like, 12th house placements, but that's beside the point. I just learned many, many years ago not to tell too much about myself to people. Except what I want them to know. Or I'll lie about it just to see how far that fucking goes. Because honestly, I don't care. Like, people are going to believe what they believe anyway. I just want to see how far you're going to run with that nonsense, though. That's what I mean. <clears throat> and you know when you sit here and you just are listening to folk and hearing them talk about themselves and then they realize you aren't really engaging the same way and you're not really interested in like sharing an aspect of yourself you know some people will feel a certain way about that some people feel a certain way about that. Like, in Aquarius, for example, an Aquarius would feel, like, really offended if you aren't opening up to them. Um, but at the same time, it's one of those things where it's just like, I mean, I could open up to you, but I don't know if I trust you yet. 
dumb motherfucker. Like, like, uh, like, I'm sorry, like, you're that whatever. Like, people are very strange in that absence. Like, people will get really mad if you don't share aspects about yourself to them. But a lot of people don't seem to realize that, like, when you're in, like, that craft and you're in that practice, like, it's actually a, a, a detriment to you. Um, you can't really talk too much about yourself because what if there's a chance you're going to try to curse something about yourself later? Do you understand where I'm getting to? Um, when you're in the craft, anything and everything can come against you if you give them enough ammunition. You know, your best friend is just your worst enemy in the waiting. You know, that's something to, like, actually think about. I don't know if people actually will. Um, really doesn't matter to me, though. And when you deal with people who decide that, like, you're basically, like, below them, um, they show you who they are and what they actually truly think about you. Always and forever. That's just what people do. That's what normal human beings just tend to do. It's, it, you know, like, humans are one thing. Being human is something else. But a human being is just, you know, a being that looks human. I guess I should start calling them, but, like, I don't think that that would be ethical. It almost sounds like a slur if I start it that way. It's like, like, that's like being like, well, colored people and people of color are two separate things. No, they are fucking not. You just added a word and mixed it in, like, Scrabble. You know, something like that, right? Um, with uh, people, they, and then, like, in that case, it will move into a sort of rivalry with folk where they will sit there and truly believe that um they can just do and say whatever to you and it's okay because you are weaker than them or you can't defend yourself or um whatever and that's part of the failings of uh people who are extroverts and talk too much right because uh, you know i'm very introverted and what i've learned is an extrovert will tell you their entire life before they tell you their fucking name in the first five minutes if you if, if, if you let them they I, I absolutely they absolutely fucking will they will tell you everything about themselves and whereas an introvert um i won't say too much of anything at all because it's a little bit too dangerous people like to uh get to know others a lot of time because it makes it a lot easier to figure you out it's a lot easier to find your weaknesses it's all that shit and, and like let's not get into if you decide to do tarot and you get clients one percent of your clients are going to be cool like i have a whole fucking people who uh would regularly show up when i would do tarot readings those were my peoples those were always my people i love them alonzo uh melinda melinda or miranda i i, I always fuck up your name but i don't mean to it but it's because like I, your name is so spelled so closely to a character i used to write when i was doing writing stories and shit right uh frankie Frank is fucking awesome. Frank has been here almost the entire time. Miss Sassy. Miss Sassy's cool. I have had people in my chats who I have known for years, right? And they are all like, well, most of, well, the ones I mentioned at least, they're fucking rad. And I love you all. Love you. And then there are ones who are just absolute trash. And it's just like, you know, like, you can leave. No one said you had to be here. No one said you had to be here. Just leave your dislike. Or don't leave nothing at all. In fact, don't engage. It'll make it worse for me. It'd be it, Don't engage at all. It'd be worse for me. Uh, not necessarily the case. Uh, but it's definitely encouraging in a sense. Right? When you have clients and you're starting to do like magic and shit not even i'm not even talking about tarot right in general i'm just talking about like like witchy shit right let's say you have clients um you they like doing spells or they want you to do spells and shit like that once again um encouraging you to give your energy away and be responsible for something that you have no part in you probably shouldn't put your business in to begin with but that money though you know which is a whole lot, like let me tell you something about money right money is a contract and currency and can be held over your head for ages right 
Uh, when I first was doing tarot, I, th I think I put price. Well, at first I think I did it for free. And then I think I, I decided to put prices up, which I, I saw how people were doing theirs. And I was like, that's really expensive. If people are broke, I'm not trying to go that expensive. And I just, like, set it to a really low price. And then, like, after a while, it's just like, I'm just going to do an honor system. So if you want to pay me for whatever, that's fine. But I'm, but I'm not charging you. Just If you think it's worth it, it's worth it. If not, oh, well. You ain't got to pay me shit at all. Because um, it just felt a little bit more um, ethical that way. Because I feel like an honor system is much more preferable than um, actually charging, charging people. Because it just, it just feels dirty. But what I learned is, like, if people give you money, that can be dangerous, too. That, that can absolutely be dangerous. A person who gives you money, or you give them money, can use that as an energetic, uh, almost tracking device on you to, like, watch your moods, um, watch how you're feeling that day, actually influence how you feel. You know, money is a currency, and it's really easy to feel like you're in a mood for days at a time when you're scared about whether or not you're going to be able to pay a light bill or if you have the ability to either pay for food or if you should pay for your cat's food or your dog's food or if you should pay this bill off but that also means you're not going to be able to eat till your next paycheck which is like another two weeks or worse if you work one of the jobs where you get paid by the month like you do and nobody ever thinks of that shit i'm just letting you know that could be a thing, but you don't gotta listen to my ass. Mm -mm, no, you don't. There are other people out there you could listen to. You ain't gotta listen to me. I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm weird. I'm weird. I'm here for you, but I'm weird. Okay, let's, let's not get that confused. Hmm? Um, but yeah, money could definitely be an exchange of energy. And money, like, the way people feel about money is the way that they feel encouraged uh, with their movements, right? You know, if you're completely dependent on readings to pay your bills, it's a good chance of, like, you know, you're not entirely concerned about the ethics and whether or not you're, um, truly could be manipulated, um, by that, uh, root of all evil, right? Because it's not necessarily money. Oh, excuse me. It's not necessarily money that, um, people find to be the root of all evil it's what you can do with it you know like people will do anything for cash nowadays especially now everyone's trying to pay to get that back everyone's trying to chase that back sad times it's really sad times. well it's only sad for people who don't you know whatever but whatever um could be scary could be you never know but the major part is, um, uh, you have to watch energetically. You know, like, if you're gonna send somebody money, what would be really, really good <clears throat> is to make sure that that money never comes out of your main account and it's in something completely separate. Or you can use one of the little green dot cards that they're gonna try to, uh, invalidate here in a few years because, like, you know, it's not fair you could put money somewhere. And we can't tax it, says the government, because that's just how the government is. It's like, how dare you just hand somebody money and not give us 6% of that? It's taxable. We need that cut. You know, like, the, the government's funny like that. The government's funny like that. The government's funny like that. Like, they want your money, but they can't even take care of their fucking own. Like, I'm just, I'm like, you know, I'm just talking shit. I'm just shit talking. No, don't take it serious. Love of God, please don't take it serious. I am not ready for that. <laughs> but um, there's that issue right there with um, currency, right? And there are also instances where um, if you do a reading for someone, it's almost the same as a spell as well, where it's like you're kind of responsible for them. But it's a lot more controlled, I'll say. What the fuck's my... Okay, that was just here. Um, it's a lot more controlled, a lot more... Yeah, and, and it's not going to affect you nearly as much. You will notice, uh, which is kind of similar to what I noticed, is that um, there will be a push into your readings of what people want to uh, be found in there. You know, like you, like it, what, like in the Herland, you would, you would not be shocked to find out that the majority of people who read tarot are single. 
But it is very strange that most of them are trying to help other people find a relationship. Because it's just like, but you're not in the energy of being in a relationship. So why would you even find somebody for somebody else? You know, and like, that's something that I don't think a lot of people um, quite grasp about it when it comes to love relationships. Which is one of the reasons why I never really did it. Because it was just one of those things where it's just like... Um, Well, honestly, it never really worked for me because, like, I'm married. And, it was, and like, marriage is kind of a protection uh, for people who are readers because it keeps you grounded. You have somebody who is not going to listen to this bullshit and thinks you're crazy uh, and keeps you from, like, going... It, keep, it helps keep your feet on the ground, basically. You're a significant other. Uh, but you, you intend to find that, like, there are people who are single reading you for other people who are single. And it becomes kind of this addictive thing where it's like a parasocial relationship, almost. Um, where people forget that they have a life to live. And their life starts literally revolving around tarot readings. And it was one of the main reasons why I backed off of it on my own. Um, I, did, I wasn't pressured to do it. I wasn't told... Um, by the Lord of Hosts to walk away from it either. None of that shit. I just decided I didn't want to become like somebody who was basically a dealer and making people a junkie. Um, like if you want to do drugs, that's fine, but I'm not going to be the one put in jail if you OD, man. Like, no, no, no. I'm, I'm getting out of this business. I'm going to live a clean life, which I'm not. I'm still doing my shit, but it just feels more natural um, to not use cards to convey messages out. Because I feel like the messages aren't even to help people with their own lives as much as it is nowadays. Um, to spy on an ex or something. Or you're the ex getting spied on. It's like there, there's literally, Or like you're a person who did wrong and for some reason you're getting brought up in a reading. And last, like, can I just talk about consent? Can I just talk about consent real quick? It's really weird how people will say like, you know... You can't read a person's energy without their consent. And it's just like, so then where are you getting your readings from? Where, where are you getting your messages from? The angels are just dropping it off, this whole novel, on your fucking door. Okay. This question. This question. You know, like, uh, what is it? That TikTok, uh psychic tarot reader who uh was doing readings and continues to make videos on a chick named uh rebecca schofield from the idaho four um uh, unalivement if y'all know about that this chick went on like the thank you phone went on the school roster and picked out this white woman's name and has been literally harassing her and ruining her name this woman is married and i think she even has kids and she's tell and she's telling people she had like a lesbian relationship with the student who wasn't even her fucking student um which is crazy and i and the only reason i think that she even went that far was because um this woman majored in studies and was a professor for uh, sexual and gender shit, historian shit, LGBTQ shit. Like, I learned that they do gay rodeos in Idaho because of researching that, actually. I was actually shook if I was like, really? So... Do they do choreograph like radio dances like is there just a line of like gay men in colorful outfits on some mechanical bulls choreographing an out uh, 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 like a show for the masses and they call it Cirque du so gay like i would totally watch that i would abs i would absolutely oh i would be th i would watch the fuck out of that that sounds fresh as hell i would love to do some shit like that oh my god it's something beautiful i would totally be watching that shit i don't give a fuck if it if it's like degenerate or not that's something different it's something new i ain't seen it before i want to see an ohio an idaho gay rodeo show that that's that's a life goal at this point then that might be silly to you which is fine which is fine and it is, but I only brought that up because I remembered it, and I thought it was interesting as fuck, and I really want Cirque du Soleil to be a thing. I would love to see a bunch of men choreographically dance on some mechanical bulls. Like, that would be the most interesting shit, just all of them move the exact same way. Like, how could you not? How could you not? Um, <clears throat> but, um, with this whole, like, thing, like, this, uh, reader, or an acclaimed psychic, 
as I uh, went and ventured in, they had a habit of going in and like doing this true crime um, s kind of a uh, style with their readings, where they would read on different like uh, unalivements and uh, questionable activities from the masses, and it's one of those things where it's just like, is this really okay? You know, this is really okay, because, like, there are victims, and those victims came from a fucking family, and are they okay with that? I don't know. I'm having a whole, like, really weird feel for the whole, like, true crime thing, because especially after the whole Jeffrey Dahmer thing, and it was just, like... So, like, the victims' families are still alive, and we're just making money off of this story but we're not even like giving it to the people who lost this loved one who's literally one of the reasons why this is up here no we're gonna glorify this unaliver and just yeah okay i mean I, like yeah, yeah that sounds fresh like I, i'm in i guess i mean i like i don't have a choice like honestly i like you know i and i grew up learning about true crime and shit from like forensic files my mom she watches the id tv all day, every day. I don't know how she does it. Like, like I, like you're, like my, psychologically, there's definitely something wrong with my mom, and I know she's never going to therapy. It's okay though. I'm perfectly fine with that. I, like, she don't need to go to therapy. I can live with. It. <laughs> she's been living with it. I can live with it too. I learned from my mama. Why shouldn't I uh, implement what she taught me? You know, but like it is just creepy. Like people will do that. People will like literally leech off of anything anymore. And when it comes to magical shit, um, that leeching always comes with a price. Um, this chick who like decided to leech off of this uh, chick from the Idaho Four, um, on alive man. Like she's facing lawsuits. She's facing this. She's dealing with that. She's trying to sue the courts, and the courts are like, "What are you doing? Like you should be a psychic and know that like that's not gonna work." fucking weirdo like you know shit like that right <clears throat> and with this leeching it, it's becoming more and more clear like you know like uh what's her name gypsy rose she finally just got released from jail and like the parasites they are there are people on the internet that are trying to already turn her into content like trying to uh suck life out of her because they see her as a potential they see her as somebody they could actually uh do something um, with and make money off of and like express certain things and it's just one of those things where it's just like if you just leave this bitch alone she's been in prison for eight fucking years she lost all of her teeth because her mom was like loading her full of drugs and having her do all sorts of experimental tests just to prove that like she was ill it's absolutely disgusting and like like uh it's, it's just weird like if people all over on this web um, all of these muggles will go and, like, just get a hold of anything. And when it comes to magic, it's just a scary thing, you know. Like, and, then, like, and you can tell with these people because they will always broadcast what they're doing. You can always tell with these motherfuckers because they always tell you what they're doing. Like, I saw one, a fucking bellboy at one point. I don't know why, but I got drawn to them and I, like, was just looking through their shit. <laughs> And they're talking about casting magic on, like, exes and shit. And this is like, bitch, this doesn't work if you just, like, go ahead and tell people what you're doing. You know, a magic trick's only successful because, like, people don't know how the magic trick works. That's why people didn't like that mass magician giving away secrets and shit. Because it was just like, you're fucking ruining it. A lot of people didn't like that he was exposing that shit. And how that shit works, right? Because, like, all magic is really is a trick. You know, esoteric, stage, um, Canampian, doesn't really matter which variation of magic it is, it's all, it, 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 it's a trick. And then there were actual tricks, but that's a completely different story, we're not going into conjuration and shit, we're just talking about, like, the regular nonsense. And then there's a whole thing with enchantments. But that's a completely different realm. And most people don't even realize what enchantment. Like, you know, you see something in the corner of your eye, enchantment. You think that some like there's something like um over yonder just in the corner, that's probably an enchantment too. It's an enchantment is just an illusion um that works like reality. Kind of like we're in right now, right? I, I like I've seen people demonstrate their altars and um 
I don't know what the fuck they were thinking, because it's just like, unless you're planning on doing magic, you're not even supposed to realize your alt- You're not even supposed to act like your altar is there until you're ready to use it. Like, you're not supposed to show your pe people your altar, but you're also not supposed to observe your altar until you're ready to do fucking magic. Like, like, I, like it astonishes me. I've seen people, um, burn them, uh, what, seven-day candles, I think they're called? The big tall pillar candles in the jars with the three, um, wicks in them. And they'll see the black around the rim of it and be like, oh my god, look at how much magic was cast on me. And then meet a person who's actually, like, made candles in jars and shit and be like, no, the wick is too close to the jar. The, the, it, it's too close to the glass. It wasn't, um, set proper. You know, also, like, it's really weird that you're estimating how much darkness is around the rim. It, it's also an expression of, like, the black magic in you. Now, if it was black all the way through the jar, even through parts of it where the wax hadn't even burnt out yet, and it's just, like, steaming down that shit... It ain't even, like, burnt down. Like, it's still, like, solid wax out of the very bottom. But for some reason, it's blacker than my than my father. Um, that might be an issue. You know, if it's blacker than the night. It, it, that, that's an issue. But if it's at the rim, no. No, that that's not magic. That's someone who didn't put the wick in right. <laughs> like, like it, it benefits um, to be an old-fashioned witch and, like, craft your own shit, because, like, then you know the answer to shit, and it's just like, no, that, that, someone didn't set it right. No, you had the flame too high. You didn't trim the wicks before you lit the shit, did you? Most people would not think of that shit. So I'm gonna end this here. I don't know if I was very, um, I feel like I jumped around a lot, but I was still really consistent. I don't know, it's been a while since I've, like, tried to do one of these things. And I really just want to, like, get back into my own craft. And I really want to get back to, like, at least helping you guys figure out crafty shit. Because it is useful. Um, but I would venture to say, if you are going to attempt to do, um, magic, or the spell work, as the muggle kids like to call it, please be careful. Um, I would suggest doing small things. You know, um, take a quarter and put it on a plate and then, like, put a candle on top of it and burn that candle on top. And every time you, uh, go to light that candle again, like, put it out in between. Don't, don't let it burn forever. Just let it burn for, like, maybe 10, 15 minutes tops. And then the next time you burn it, put two more quarters down in there and let it burn again. And you just keep adding money on. And, like, sooner or later, you're going to have money... That's coming to you extra, other than what's been melted in that candle, right? And you'll have extra money in the wax. And that's going to be fun. Because then you can melt it, or you can burn that shit off. Um, it, the, it, like, the money's going to have like a waxy feel to it. <coughs> Just letting you know. You can put it in a plastic bag if you want to. That, that That's not going to hurt the shit at all. It's still going to do the same principle. Like, it's, it, like plastics don't make everything possible. And plastic really doesn't, like keep things from happening. I mean, you can leave a little crack of it open in case you feel a certain type of way. Um, and you don't want the bills being covered with wax if that's how you feel. The coins really don't fucking matter. They really don't. Um, but with the, uh, money out, I, I can understand that. Now, you could probably put it in some boiling water and that water would help melt the wax off so you can get it off of it, but then you're gonna have wax in your pot. That's not fun. So, I would probably say don't do that unless you don't give a fuck. Uh, you could also um, learn to sing a song to yourself as a mantra, right? In order to help boost your energy throughout the day. You know, like, I'm gonna have a great day. I'm gonna have my way. And you could sing that. That's just random. I just made that up. But you could sing that. And... If you continue to do that over and over again, it'll actually help boost your confidence. It'll make your day go better. You know, um, you can even say, like, I'm going to have a good day whether I want to or not. Whether it is or not. Even if it is not, it's still going to be a good day. You can make any sort of mantra, and that'll actually help motivate your day and get you going and give you inspiration. Just You don't even have to say it the first thing. Say it as soon as you... Um, Get out of bed. Say it right before you leave out the door. Say it right before you go into work, knowing that it's going to be some bullshit. And I promise you, um, that'll help you throughout the day. When it comes to love or romance, um, 
or even traveling, this works too. You can take a little bit of lavender and stick it in your wallet or in your purse and carry it with you for good tidings, um, for attraction or whatever. Um, eucalyptus, you can use oil or even tea tree oil, which I actually use those for my hair, but you could actually use those two um, things to help with better communications with spirits. And you can also use it to help protect your mind from thoughts if you're into that kind of shit, but like that's all depends. On. Like that's why you should cover your head though. But that's just that's just me. Uh, even if people are like, you won't get a man with the bonnet. That's not the fucking point. That bonnet is for my protection, not his. And if he don't like it, I'll obviously I'm protected from him. You know. So little things right there. Um, you could start like studying sigils. Please, for love of God, do not take sigils off of the internet. I, like, I've had someone, um, I can't remember what sigil it was, it was when I was experimenting to see how the influence of, um, others when given a prompt with a sigil would charge a sigil, and I learned, like, I made a, like, let's say I made a sigil, and I wrote the words, um, devoted or something like that, right, I had to think about that. Everyone's going to have their different version of devoted, and that's going to influence that energy. And depending on what the majority is, which I would not be aware of, because I'm not the one with the brain deciding what it is, um, that's probably what's going to dictate, charge, and influence that uh, sigil very greatly. And it is absolutely fucking chaotic, and I would not suggest anybody try that shit, because... Ooh. Mmm. Mmm. Mm -mm -mm. But there was one time when um, I had made a sigil, and I think I had put it in one of the Aminos when I was using the Amino app years ago with my art and shit. And what happened was some person contacted me and asked me how to get the sigil to help them sleep because it's not helping them sleep. And I informed them it's not for sleeping. So they continued to ask me how to get it to work for sleeping. And I informed them again it's not, it, it, it does, it's not for sleeping, it's for something completely entirely different. I just told you that. And then they said, well, I need this to work so I can go to sleep with it. And I was just like, well, maybe you should probably make your own sigil because that sigil is not for sleeping. And it's like, the first thing you try to sit there and gaslight me into telling them how to make it for sleeping. And I was sitting there like, I mean, like, that's not how that works though it's not going to work for sleep i mean you can try to use it for sleep if you want but you're gonna have fucking nightmares like a motherfucker i didn't tell them that i'm pretty sure they went ahead and tried to use it for sleep anyway god bless them they they damn they're damn this but it was like one of those things where it's just like it didn't matter me the original creator telling them exactly how this instrument worked all they cared about was that i wasn't giving them what they wanted Right? They didn't give a damn about what it was designed for. They liked it, but they wanted it to make it into something that they could use it for. Which you should be able to do as a practitioner, right? You can take anything that anybody else makes and use it. And manipulate it, right? Like, you, you should be able to take something and kind of like a reference painting. You know, um, you're, you're painting a picture from the reference, a real life thing you see. You know, like my calendar or my trees, or in, like, the ancestors right here in my little, like, tapestry that I got hung up. Honestly, I should put the purple one up. I miss my purple one. I don't the things I need to hang it. I don't think this side of the wall is long enough, and I'm not sure how it would work with the door. Now, maybe I'll leave it in my good bedroom. I'll leave it in the bedroom. I'll leave it in the bedroom. But, um, it's like... You know, let's say you want to paint this jar. This is your reference, right? You can take it, but, like, when you make it, at least, like, you know, it's yours. You know, you, like, you can, like, draw the image. You can make it look any way you want it to. Uh, but this is the real thing. What would be a detriment is um taking this real thing and, and laying it on the fucking paper and, like, drawing around it like you're trying to make a turkey in kindergarten, if you remember that shit. Never really trying to make a uh, variation of what you see, but actually literally trying to take the thing and turn it into something different. Like taking this and trying to make it inst uh, like 
um, a mosaic art piece. Let's say you wanted to break this jar up, and, and instead of it being a cup, you just want to add it to a mosaic art piece. You can't get mad because the pieces are sharp and pointy and you got cut from it. And worse, they don't lay flat. Like, this is a curved thing, but you're expecting them to lay flat for a mosaic thing. And now you're getting all fucked up. Now you're getting all fucked up and cut from it. And then you want to come to me, the practitioner who made this thing, and then, like, tell me, how do I get this jar to lay flat so I can make a mosaic piece? Um, that's a drinking glass. It, it, it's meant to be drank out of. Okay, but I wanted to lay I want I wanted to like lay flat. It, it's the same fucking argument right here. Like you like why don't you make your own instead of trying to take this and turn it into something different and then be mad because it doesn't fit the way that you thought it would. You should have just got like a fucking uh, glass frame from fucking Walmart for like ten dollars and then let's use that for a mosaic piece. But instead you wanna take this glass jar and then get mad that the pieces um won't lay flat. Makes no sense to me. Humans are very strange creatures. But anyway, I'm closing it out for tonight. I'm getting ready to go to bed because I've been up since like 2 this morning. Because I had to clean the house. I had my appointment to go to today. That was fun. Like the point, my fucking surgery got canceled. I'll wait another two months, which is like, I, I mean, that's, that's fine. I don't mind this side of my face looking like I'm, I'm like, cute. Oh, God, that's actually, a, that's actually, I have a whole, ah, oh, well, that's, then I'll be all right, I'll be all right. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and end this out. You all have a good night. I will talk to you all later. Whoever all y'all is here. I don't know. I'm actually, like, very intrigued by how this uh, whole engagement's been going. It's been different. It has been different. I wish I would have just started doing shit like this instead of what I had been doing. Because, oh my god, this is, like, way more, um... Honestly, I feel like this is way more fun. Because at least it doesn't carry that, like, note of, like, needing to always be here. Um, I don't know. It's something about, like, uh, you know how when people say, like, the way you get big is with consistency? And it's just, like, of what variety, like, consistently coming on here or consistently coming up and, like, having something actually important to say or something worth sharing, you know? Um, you know, tarot cards are easy content, but it, it's a lot more effort and a lot more rewarding to actually, like, give something that's worth engaging into um actually uh, deliver something that gives people something to ponder and think about and maybe possibly you can even utilize the same shit in your own life um and like i said you don't gotta listen to me there are plenty of other people who have their own ideas their own methods and their own systems and paradigms that they work through i'm not the only one i just have a system you might not have heard of and that's perfectly fine because it's probably better that way now, honestly, God, like, Lord knows if there are more people like me in the world. Honestly, if there are more people like me in the world, there'd be a lot more f fusion jazz. And good food. Speaking of food, my birthday's on the 11th. I want a ridiculous amount of sushi. Some Windsor Newton, like, professional paints. Particularly, either candy and yellow or lemon yellow, right? Either one of those two yellows, a cyan or a turquoise, because cyan is absolutely is super hard to find. And I don't even think, like, Windsor Newton makes it. Um, a magenta or even permanent rose, which I do want permanent rose. Uh, magenta, permanent rose. Sepia. A yellow, turquoise, magenta, a permanent rose, or some rose. Sepia, oh, and yellow ochre and Fren blue French ultramarine. Those are the only colors I'd be using with my palette, I think. Yeah, magenta, sepia. Oh, wait, hold on a minute. God damn it, I'm looking right at my palette right now and I just show you all. Yes. Okay. These are, this is my palette. 
This is if you want to give me a nice birthday gift, right? Turquoise, permanent rose, quadacridone violet, or the other weird quintessential violet. Like, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's quadacridone violet, but I'm not sure because I don't remember the words. Uh, is that it? Magenta, yellow ochre, lemon yellow, or cadmium yellow, but I prefer lemon yellow. Or there's another yellow that I like, but it doesn't really matter. If, 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 like, at least get one very close to it, right? Sempia and a friend and blue French ultramarine. That, that's my palette. That's that's just give me them paints. Give me big ass paints. If you get me the professional ones, the pricey as fuck. Well, I'll do my best to suck your dick for life. Now, technically, I can't do that because my jaws are all fucked up, right? And also, it's illegal to prostitute, and I don't want to go to jail. So I'll give you an air. I'll 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 air hug you for life. I will give you internet hugs. Counts for something. I think it does, especially if I get sushi and like watercolors. That's honestly, I'm probably gonna ask everybody for that. I'm just gonna be like, just give me some paint and food. Indulge my tourist placements, please. And my Scorpio placements, because I want to make that shit, like, ugh, fucking sexy as fuck. Just watch me. Just watch me. Just watch me. You're going to see it. Anyway, I'm going to bed. And, like, getting this shit ready. Y'all have a good night. Be safe. I love your face. Bye.